In the previous video, we dealt with the Tyler series, one very important aspect of calculus. And in this video, we will be dealing with the Fourier series. All right, welcome. My name is Yunus, and in this video, uh, we will be taking, as I mentioned, a look at another very crucial uh, aspect of calculus, which is the series of Sir Fourier. So the video will include uh, defining what this concept is about, where it came from, and then we will be dealing with some practical examples to understand it better. And as the title suggests, we will be implementing it with Python. So that being said, let's go. Let's first start by defining what a Fourier series is. So the Fourier series, as the name suggests, is basically a series, or a summation, of harmonic functions, and this results in a periodic function. Uh, what this means is that you can approximate any sorts of function you can imagine with just a combination of harmonics. Though, what does harmonic and periodic mean in this context? A harmonic function is a wave-like function, with uh, some frequency. This is also known as sinusoidal functions, for example, cosine and sine of x. Whereas a periodic function is a function that just repeats itself at regular intervals, of course, giving a certain frequency. For example, the ones you can see right here. Every harmonic function can be considered as a periodic function, whereas the opposite isn't the case. Okay, uh, now on the technical side, the Fourier series is a summation of harmonics, so cosine and sine functions, having a frequency that increases each time the number n increases. We have to introduce some coefficients a and b in some way to adapt them to our function f uh, that we want to approximate. So here we go. These coefficients are obtained by evaluating uh, this formula so by integrating our f function times cosine for a and then times sine for b uh, across uh, the periodic domain whereas a0 is obtained just by integrating our f function now before we can move on let's take the time to talk about Sir Fourier himself and do some brief history <clears throat> so, Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier, born in the 70s, in Auxerre, uh, France, was a French mathematician and physicist. The Fourier series is named in honor of him, where he introduced the series for the purpose of solving the heat equation in a metal plate. So, it was the problem he was uh, working on at that time. Now, the heat equation is a partial differential equation. Prior to Fourier's work, no solution to the heat equation was known in the general case, although particular solutions were known if the heat source behaved in a simple harmonic way. So if the heat source was a sine or cosine wave, which isn't really the case in the real world. Fourier's idea was to model a complicated heat source as a linear combination of simple sine and cosine wave and to write the solution as a superposition of the corresponding eigen solutions the superposition or linear combination is called the fourier series uh, now let's take a quick and easy example to evaluate a fourier series Okay, so let's say we have this function right here, which is equal to 1 if x is uh, less than pi, and it's equal to 0 elsewhere. So the first thing we gotta do is to compute the terms, the a and b terms. Here we can simply compute a and 0, which is equal to, to 2 directly. Because f is equal to 1, and then you integrate it, it gives 2 pi, then 2 pi over pi is equal to 2. And then we compute the a n. 
So this is also equal to 1 times cos n of x and then we integrate it and get this and then this results in this expression right here which is equal to 0 all the time because sine of n pi is always equal to 0 and this is also always equal to 0. So it's 0 minus 0 which is 0 as well. And then it's also the same for bn. We integrate it and then we evaluate it and so on. We get 0 as well. Alright, so this is a bit expectable because our function is even. So you have f of x is equal of f of minus x, which is equal to 1. And then we get this uh, result, which is uh, kind of a very simple a and basic example. But it is an example with which you can uh, better understand what is happening in the, the series. Okay, now the last thing to do is to go in Python and try to implement this method. So I'll see you in my Visual Studio code. Okay, so here we are in our uh, Visual Studio code interface. And we will start by importing our NumPy module as always. Okay. And we will define our periodicity which will be L, let's say it's equal to np.py, okay? Now we will create our x and y vector. So x will be equal to numpy.lin space, like so. It will start from minus L and in L across, say, 500 values. So this will generate a vector. And then we define our y vector which will be equal to a, uh, x let's say so this stands for f of x okay now the first thing we can do is to compute our a0 which is equal to 1 over l then times so the integral uh, one way to compute an integral is with the numpy.traps traps method like so so traps stands for trapezoidal which is a numerical way to approximate an integral and I prepared here some uh, a site where it can summarize what this method is about like you can see here you can approximate this integral by computing the value of the function at each point x0, x1, x2 and so on and then it is divided into n intervals and the step of the intervals is denoted with dx okay so here it will be y so this is the thing we want to integrate and then it's x here and then the number of intervals we can set it to a hundred intervals so this is the length of each interval then we can initialize our self-generated Fourier series Fourier. okay so this will be equal to numpy dot zeros having the length of x and then we will add a zero over two like so so we have our first element of the series Fourier. Now we need the other n elements. To do so, we will generate a for loop. So for n in range of one until a hundred. So this will compute a hundred terms of the Fourier series. So the Fourier term will be equal to a n times something. Uh, oops, plus b n times something. So we have first to generate our a n and b n. So we will do this right now. Okay. This will be equal similarly to a zero. Uh, just copy this right here. And then here it's y then times 
np.cos of np.py times n and then times x over l. All right, so this is the an, how we defined it. And then it's the same for en, just modifying this with sign. Now the Fourier term is an and then it's times np.cos. Uh, it's exactly the same expression right here, so we will copy this. And it's here np.sign, and we will just copy it again. Okay, so we have our Fourier term. Now we will add this vector right here. We can use the numpy.add method. So y Fourier is equal to numpy.add of Fourier term y dot Fourier. Okay, and then basically now we have our Fourier series right here. Okay, now we want display our plots, so we will import import matplotlib dot pyplot and then as plot. We will create our figure, so figure is equal to plot dot figure like so and then you have inside the fig size will be equal to 8 and then 4.125 okay and then we will first display our y for you and then compute it because we already computed it here so we will start by displaying and then to do so uh, we are going to create axis so axis is equal figure dot subplots Okay, and then we will add a axis dot plot. We can just say x and then y of Fourier. We can also add a grid, let's say. So axis dot grid. We have to pause it, plot dot pause, let's say of 0 0.05 seconds. We also have to draw it. Alright, and then finally we'll add a plot dot show. Now we have to clear each time the figure or the axis. We will add a figure.clear. Okay, and then we run this. So you can see this is our the evolution of the Fourier series. Now let me change this a little bit and make it a bit more clear and visually aesthetic. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here I am back. And the things I changed, so I add the color and then a label here. I also add another plot of the y so we can compare the actual function and the Fourier generated series with a color of red and then a label of periodic function. And some titles, x labels, y, and then the limits of the axes. All right, now you can see the numbers of terms increasing and then the more the number increases the more we get closer to this um, function this periodic function we generated though so now we want to know how actually close we are to this function so to y equals x one way to do so is to compute the error of it and to compute the error found that there is this notion right here which is the mean squared error where we can describe the similarity of f and g by computing this right here so we will try and do this in visual studio code okay so now we want to compute the error and we will create a new variable called error and then as you can see here, we have first to square root all of it. So it's going to be a numpy dot uh, sqrt of something. We need to square root the integral of this. So we are going to use the numpy dot traps again with it. Then let's say it's here it will be y and then x. And then dx is equal to 1 over 100. So now this y right here is in reality this expression right here. 
so it's the something abs so it's numpy dot abs of something squared we are going to do numpy dot add y fourier then minus y like so make this one right here at the above so we can also display it here in the title like so and then we will do a let's say error like so okay so we should have everything let's try run our code so yeah you can see here the Fourier series and it's evolving and then each time it's evolving you can see the error decreasing and then well we can take run right here and then add thousand so yeah thank you for watching this video this has been my video of this uh, channel I really enjoy making them so uh, consider subscribing if you want to see more and see ya!